Got He's going up against Steer, who's pretty, pretty much 50-50 uh, since he's been here on Samsung Galaxy Con. He has come out in two ace matches. Overall, he's lost both of them. Only two games against Protoss. He's also 50-50 there. Um, Again, I want to I want to actually point out that uh, the song that he uses is just so appropriate for Deer. Like he was once on top of the world by far the best player. He was like a hero to zero more than I think anybody. He like was one of the players who was on top of the world. Nobody could touch him, and he fell down so fast. Like you, know, you think of players like Jokchi, who were champions, and then they fell down. It didn't. It didn't happen so fast. It happened to Deer. Now he's back on his way up. He took us some time. He took some time to, to join a foreign team on Mao's Esports. Didn't work out for him. And now he's back, hoping to regain some of that former glory. And look at Yoma here. He chooses the song "I Am the Best" from 21. He's he's not looking like the best on the MVP. I'd say second best so far, but he's hoping to get up there. Well, um, he's got a perfect score so far. Yeah, he's not failed yet. He definitely hasn't failed yet. Um, Lucero was named, quote unquote, the MVP of MVP, but uh, Yohan could definitely do it, especially if they're expecting a Protoss in an ace match. I definitely say that. Look at this. Everyone votes for Yohan. Every single person. Oh boy. Deer's got a big weight on his shoulders. If he could take the win, though, he closes it out for his team. If Yohan was able to take it, we're going to an ace match. A very, very, very close situation here we could be having. We could have a second ace match today. Deer could do this. He you definitely know? could. I mean, we're going into a PvP. It's on Deadwing. Not the smallest map, but let's see what he can do. It's going to be Deer versus Yonwa here on Deadwing. Let's jump into the game. Up here in the top right, in the red, from Samsung Galaxy Con, one of our Protoss players, he is Deer. Looks very focused. Diagonally across, in blue for MVP, it's Youngwa. One of the most consistent Code S players of all time. Uh, I think he was actually one season shy of getting the NST award. He didn't get it already, but uh, he's been in the round of 32 of Code S. Way more times he's been in the round of 16, or been in Code A for that matter. Like, he is a Code S veteran. He's been, been through a lot of teams. Um, well, actually, honestly, no, not really. Just I am and uh, an MVP. The I am that we saw, though, last year was just, like, not the same I am that we saw in the past. Uh, to be frank with you guys, like... Um, that was a that was a sad sad uh, remnants of one of the best team uh, team league teams in Korea of all time for Star Trek Two. Yeah, arguably the best like historically with their wins, players they had. Anyway, see a bit of a later gateway here out of Yonwa. They both come out on fourteen. Just looks like a more economical gate out of Yonwa. I guess it's not really a quick one out of Deer. I was looking at the supply there. It was. It, Looks like it came out on 13 at least. Well, what it what it tells us here, uh, these gateways being a little bit later, is that we're most likely going to see um, no proxies this game, like no rush tech. A new, more economic focus game. We might even see like Sentry expands. Quick yeah, robos. no, no, no San versus SOS, <laughs> as we saw earlier on today. That was a wonky game, man. Yeah. Yangwa, he's uh, you know we we saw the little stat down there. Deer's actually two and zero oh against Yangwa so far in the uh, heart of the swarm, but I don't know. I, I feel like this Yonwa has figured out this matchup as it is right now, and he just looks unstoppable here, and that's part of the reason why I favor him here. It just Yonwa in a PvP against anyone, really, at this moment in time, I would favor him probably. Maybe, like, Yonwa versus Hero, I'd probably go for Hero. You know, CJ Antis Hero. But um, there's few Paradoxes, I think, right now that can defeat him in this matchup. Yeah, I mean, especially in the straight-up game. I feel like the last VP I watched of Youngwa, like, he was even behind in the game, and then he just made, like, some incredibly good decisions to, to catch up and win. Yeah. Like, he's, he's, he's incredibly smart. That's the one thing that strikes me about Youngwa. He's just very good at decision-making. He's smart, and he's patient. Okay, Stargates are both players. 
Really not what I expected to see. Um, for me, Stargate is like a Frost build, and this map is somewhat of Frost in a lot of ways. Uh, like in its size, Rush Distance is like a four-player map technically, although I'd call it a three-player map. What? He didn't see that Stargate? I guess not. That's weird. But he went into the mineral line. That's really strange. Okay. Maybe he didn't. Maybe I was looking at something else. But um, huh. that's really got to throw him off a bit here, I guess. Yeah, we'll check him right now. Okay, he, he definitely did it. not see that. Okay. Well, he's going for Phoenixes, which is going to be safe against scouting uh, nothing in a lot of ways because he can follow up with a scout. He's weak against DTs, but luckily for him, there are no DTs, no factor here in this game. So it's going to be versus an Oracle, too. So he's actually going to get somewhat of a build or a win here, kind of like what we saw earlier. A little bit different, of course, but um, Oracle, a popular build on this map. So going blind Phoenix, even after not scouting anything, is... Not bad, and also he couldn't be expecting that it's a proxy Stargate because he didn't see anything yeah. either, so. And now, he's keeping him at home. He's he's totally prepared for everything. We even see, like, the Twilight Council come down for Yonwa right after the robotics facility comes down for Deer, which is definitely a win for Deer as well. Deer looking good in terms of build orders so far this game. Yeah. You know, I was going to say, like, um, I'll hold that thought. It was is so how does this lucky. happen sometimes like i swear this happens all the time in Proly. there's just like one random probe out on the map and it somehow scouts your oracle i don't think it's i, I mean it's, it's lucky in a lot of ways but i think it's not a coincidence right like this probe is out there looking for anything you can find could be proxy dts could be proxy stargate could be like you know hidden blink soccer tech like, it could be anything i feel like in, in high level pp the reason why we see one of these scouts always on the map is just like there's always a good reason to have a probe checking everything, literally everything. That's why we see a probe for Youngwa as well out there trying to find and scout something. It's always good to have a probe on the map. Yeah, and I, I also guess, like, um, the Phoenixes are coming down towards the middle of the map, and that probe is up there, I guess, to scout if the Oracle goes on that path, if he is going for Oracles, which he kind of assumed. So funny, the Oracle's now cowering behind the base because <laughs> that's the only place he knows he could be safe. <laughs> But he's gotten no return on this investment. I guess he may just want to use it a little bit later on in a fight or something. Because it can be useful. Yeah, sure. It's also detection. It's also uh, good for harassing later. Um, it can do some revelation to, to reveal the, the units. Like Maybe tagging. he sneaks like all the way around the left side and the top side of the map and gets some harassment done. Could happen. Well, we just see a few Phoenixes kind of skipping around the map. Trying to find... Anything they can. Um, but there's something to be found. I think they're really just on, honestly looking for that Oracle, but... The Oracle's not dead. It's it's alive. It's hidden. It might as well be dead at this point for its relevancy in this game. <laughs> uh, the Nexus timing for these two players, a little bit faster for Deer, but not a huge significant factor. What I find to be more significant is the Immortal Tech versus the Blink Tech. Exactly what you're saying yeah. earlier. Like, the Blink you won the is, Tech War. The, the two techs that... You know what I went to have found nothing of relevancy in this game. But there's like no use. Like the blink shuts down phoenixes, but so what? The phoenixes already played their role, and they're still alive. They can harass. They can do backstabbing later. But if the phoenixes make it so you forced you're forced to leave the tech that you committed to six stalkers and blink in your main base, and they're stuck there. That's damage enough. And he's already got the best tech uh, that you would want to have here. He's got several immortals. We might even see him at a robotics support bay pretty soon. Yeah, let's see if he does that. He's making a fourth immortal even deers right now. He is not messing around. Do you see just two phoenixes coming towards the base of Yonwa? They're just going to scout the uh, stalkers here. I'm not actually sure if he got the scout on the Twilight Council or the blink. I don't I don't think Yonwa showed the blink just yet. Lone stalker. Not going to pick it up, though. Okay, there we go. He shows the blink. And uh, that's a good scout. Yeah, it really oh, yeah. is. You, Deer's got to be happy with that one. You committed to Blink, too? Wow. I'm really fine. Is he one just thing that Yoma could possibly do is just go for a like a giant stalker attack. We've seen this sometimes before, but you have to hit like a very, very narrow timing before he has a lot of immortals, but he's already going up against four immortals. Yeah, like I was going to say like that's the only thing I can imagine what this pylon is going to be for. Like, what is that? Is that just going to be for scouts? Or maybe scare them to think you have DTs or something if he scouts a pylon? I thought it's not going to get anything done. By the way, it's also found, so... 
These Immortals are going to thrash it. There's an Observer nearby. It's nothing to worry about. Base for both players. Base for days. That's what we're going to be seeing here because uh, it's going to be Colossi versus Colossi. And it's going to be a while before we get there. So are Sit there... back, grab your popcorn, get a drink. Yeah. Now, are there some ways that Deer can utilize his advantage? Not a lot because his comp doesn't allow him to attack cross spawns. What he could do is take a faster third Nexus, but that also leaves him a little bit vulnerable. So I think he's just going to wait until he has a few Colossi before he, he does it, but I do think that he will be the one to confidently take yeah, the third base first. I agree with you. I mean, just with these Phoenixes, they, they see everything, you know? They come in here, they see this huge amount of stalkers of like, I'm going to be totally fine against it. I have four Immortals, you know? <laughs> That's going to win any day, even with like perfect blink micro, I can take a third base. Um, I think he wants to go for a bit of a better scout, though, like maybe in the back, in the base, make sure he's going for Colossi, something like this. That's why he goes in for this hallucination scout. It is going to get denied, though. It does see one immortal, and that's about it. There's that third base. Feels comfortable enough now. Sees the rocks are being killed. And that might just be, like, enough information alone for him to just be like, okay, well, you're planning on taking the third base. I'm going to take mine first. PvP could be a game of chicken in that way. Yeah, man. And sometimes uh, even Mech versus Zerg, you know? Uh, where the, I, we saw it yesterday. Uh, why can't I remember who this player was? Uh, Sky High? Sky High, yeah. Yeah, Sky High made like four or five CCs like right when they realized, like, okay, this is the time where we have to macro up. It was, uh, it was pretty interesting. We saw an Observer pick off, by the way, for Good Eye by Deer to pick that up. And, uh, you know, there was a faster plus two for Youngwa, but it's not going to matter that much because Deer is able to get his plus two out with his timing on his Twilight Council, which also lines up with his charge. And uh, fairly soon when that third base gets its gases up, maybe even a little bit before that, around that timing, he's gonna we're going to see his Temple Archive come up so we can get the Archons as well. Something that we will see from Youngwa. And late game PvP is kind of funny because little advantages that you get in the early game start to matter less and less the closer you get to 200-200 uh, supply. Then yeah. it becomes more about Positioning, composition, uh, you know, timings, and how you control your army. Time warps. Army control, exactly. It was time warps, man. That Oracle does get scouted. He was just waiting for it. It's going to just sack and try to get some kills. <laughs> one. Gets one. That's, like, better than you could have ever hoped for with that Oracle, man. He even got the uh, Nexus Cannon to be used, too, actually. That's, like, that's like a dream come true on that it's Oracle. It's a little bit of an overreaction, actually, from Deer, I have to say. He was totally fine. You see an attack coming across the I'll, map. From I like this a lot. I don't think he's going to commit. I think he just wants him to think he's going to commit, and he's just going to walk back. This is an opportunity for Youngwa, though. Big opportunity. Youngwa's moving out as well. I don't know. I, I still like the composition of Youngwa a bit better. As long as the Colossi just stay back, they must have range, right? I mean, yeah, of course. They both got range. Okay. Yep. Don't worry. Immediately, the Observer puts it up there. He's like, yeah, Brennan, I got your back. They both got range. They did. Um, charge is about to be done for Youngwa. As well as Deer. Deer's plus two is finished. And, uh, I mean, the Archon count two to one in favor of Youngwa, actually. He's going to need that to help deal with the Immortals. Plus three comes out first for Deer. I like Deer's position in this game a lot, but this is about to get really weird, Valdez. We might He's have about a base to get trade. Funky man, we could see, see a bit of a. He could recall too. Recall, but. yeah, but that's taking away a lot of your mother's well, core energy as well. Looks like he's just gonna walk back as the eyes identified this. And if he if he recalled too, he wouldn't be able to spread. He'd be like all stuck on his nexus. Yeah, he's just gonna come from two sides. Uh, there's time warps oh to try God. to buy time here. Free Colossus, anyone? There we go. Has to be careful with this Colossi in the back though. Yonwa does. Okay, he's just gonna recall out. I think. Trying to stack up to get his units ready. He wants to recall home. No, he's just going to keep attacking here. Yeah, I think he's totally fine to do that. He's taking out one of these Colossi. Um, he has cleared up that base, or rather that uh, Warprism harass. I wasn't Mother's sure. A little bit out of position. I wasn't sure where Deer's army went there for a second. He only went, went all the way back to his natural. There might have been some harass that we didn't see on camera. Uh, he's ready to warp in more units to continue the harass. This is kind of forcing Young went to an awkward position where he's forced to engage. Zealots come up here at the front. We do see a bulldog attempt on those Immortals and those Colossi. The Archons are soaking up so much damage at the front here. 
for Youngwa. Yeah, it's really about those Archons, man. We do see him trying to go what for a doing? Warp Prism. That was a move command, and that was pretty bad. He just had that Warp Prism in the back. He didn't warp in anything, though. That was, that was, he just right-click moved. He had that fight almost won. He was in such a good position. He just right-clicked moved. Yeah, we that see a huge sigh from Youngwa, too. Oh, he my knows God. It now. Oh, that just makes me so sad. That makes me so sad, actually. Big mistake, man. That's what happens with StarCraft. You make one big mistake like that, you can lose the fight and lose the game. What has he got now? There are five Colossi for Deer. And that Dark Shrine is on Deer's side. It's not on Youngwa's. If he had a Dark Shrine, you, that's nice in these situations where you pick up the Observer and then you like survive with the DTs when you're 40 supply down. Not going to happen this time. This army oh is way too solid. He does have a somewhat forward warping point, and he has a warp prism to help continue to reinforce this aggression. Oh, I think he just has to type out. This is the worst way to lose your perfect record. Yeah, man. It's it's not to say that he was going to win that fight 100%. A lot of Colossi were rallying out, but he just he was ahead, I feel, in that fight, and he just totally threw it away with just a misclick. GG. GG. That's StarCraft, like you said. Straight up, that's what it is, man. Control is so important in PvP. Yeah, we were talking about it, you know, in that mid game where not much was going on. And uh, Deer just had the better control. He was looking like out of position, you know, like out in the map. It looks like Yoah had him beat and in a great position, but Deer just very calmly did everything correct from that position. Whereas Yoah, he was looking good. He picked off one Colossus. He was trying to make it work, but then he just threw it all away. Like you were saying, that one big mistake, one move command. And uh, yeah, very disappointing here for Yonwa. But that's gonna do it here, guys. Samsung is actually gonna take their first win, round number two, over MVP. Yep. I I don't know what to say, guys. I mean, that was that was a tragic and anticlimactic. Could have been like a much more even fight. We could have seen like more trades, more harass, more warp ends. Oh boy. Well, that that's like one of those games I watch. This almost puts me down because you know, on the other side of things, Deer is just like, I don't feel good about that win. Mm -hmm. Like, he just right clicked into my army. Well, yeah. You even see his, his team coming in and being like, what happened? What actually happened? They all have like concerned looks on their face. They're like, are you okay? Like, I think they all they just, know what it they know what it feels like to be in that situation. Yeah, it's like every single one of those players had a moment like this before in their career. Like all of them. I mean, including Choi. I bet they've all had this moment. Has there been a, a moment in, in all those players' career where the commentators were like, did he just right click? Oh, no. It's happened to everybody. It happens. Uh, and this one's one sort of no, there's no anger. This is just a discussion of just like, you know, you had that one. Choi does look a bit angry, uh, yeah. but it was a really important match. Totally understandable. That kind of pressure. Yeah, a bit unfortunate, but uh, as you guys do see on screen, the match result goes to Samsung Galaxy Con here in the end of the day. A win's a win for Deer. Reality starts it off with a, another win over Marine King. Marine King gets his TBT record to 0-6. Bravo does win against Departure there in a pretty fast one. Pretty interesting build there. Losira, that was the best match, I think. He had, like, a really cool build. I really enjoyed that match. And then Deer versus Yonghua. It was looking really even for a long time, but Yonghua making one big mistake. Throwing it all away. Yeah, well, Lucira definitely being the, the most consistent, uh, best player for MVP so far. I mean, this guy is going places. Really sad.